Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is Little Bookish Teacher and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about some of the graphic novels that I'm going to be taking into my Year 2 classroom library. So I'm really excited to be going into a Year 2 classroom. It's not a year level that I have specifically taught for an entire year before and I'm really looking forward to it. And one of my favourite parts of setting up my classroom, which I have not had a chance to do yet because the school's been undergoing some work so we haven't been able to get in. One of my favourite things to do is to set up a classroom library and to have as many books as we possibly can in there because kids need choices. When they're picking books right and I love having graphic novels because I think they are a wonderful gateway for students who really struggle with traditional novel format books and I know lots of people have opinions on graphic novels but the fact is they are a really important type of text to have available to students because it actually involves quite a bit of skill to accurately read a graphic novel because not only do you have to be able to read the words and quite often most of that is just reading conversation. So then you have to read between the lines about how characters are feeling, what's happening in between the panels. So there's a lot of things going on. Plus you have to actually learn how to read the panels because you can't just read them in any order that you want. So I am a huge fan of graphic novels. I love reading them and I love to talk to kids about them because I think sometimes you can hook a child into reading through a graphic novel and then you can help them to pick things that have similar tones that are more traditionally formatted novels. So I have a pile here of some graphic novels that I just happen to have floating around on my bookshelves that I want to take in for the kids. Things that they probably haven't necessarily seen yet or if they have they may not have had a chance to read them. There are a variety of different lengths and reading levels but they're all really fun. So the first three are actually a series. This is the Sherlock Bones series by Renee Trammell and these are utterly delightful. So this series follows Sherlock Bones who is a tawny frogmouth owl skeleton that lives in a natural history museum and Sherlock Bones loves to investigate mysteries that are happening within the museum. So the first one is Sherlock Bones and the Natural History Museum. The second one is Sherlock Bones and the Sea Creature feature and then also Sherlock Bones and the Art and Science Alliance. I had the absolute best time reading these books. They are so fun. The characters are great. The humour in it is really fun. There's a lot of puns. It is in black and white but the panels are quite big. The text is quite big and these would be perfect for some of my more capable readers as well. So there's a little bit of challenge in there but also a lot of fun and a lot of adventure. Another one that I've talked about on this channel is Lily Half Moon The Magic Gems by Xavier Bonnet. This is the first book in the Lily Half Moon series and the second one is coming out I think in April which is really exciting. So hopefully I'll be able to get a copy of that and add it to the collection. This is about Lily who discovers that she is a witch and it starts attending a school for for witches and it's very sweet there's a little bit of a mystery in there but mostly it's about her coming into her magic abilities and learning more about herself it is a beautifully colorful story and the other thing that's really fun is that in between the story you have these pages that are like pages from a research book so as Lily's learning about her abilities she they're like there's more information in here which is kind of cool. There is also Sunny the Shark by Remy Lai. I've read a few Remy Lai books and I absolutely love this one. This one is very much about environmentalism, particularly environmentalism and looking after the oceans as told from the perspective of Sunny the Shark. It is bright, it is colorful, big panels, big text perfect for second grade. The next series I have a review on my channel already for these. I read the Narwhal and Jelly books, well the first four books in the Narwhal and Jelly series. These are very simple graphic novels. Again, bright bold pictures, big text, lots of fun stories. Each book has four or five interconnected stories like chapters so you can read one and then put it down and pick it up again. They're really fun, they look a lot at friendship, they have a lot of humour, there's a comic within the comic kind of situation going on as well with some side characters and I just enjoyed these and I think they're really appealing to students who are just starting to read and getting into graphic novels. Now the next two are definitely more middle grade titles but I wanted to take them in because I think one I have a few students who are quite capable readers and I think will enjoy these. So there is Ember and the Lost and the Island of Lost Creatures. This one is by Jason Pammond. I should have a review for this one as well. Any of these that I have specific reviews for I'll leave down below. This is about Ember who is quite small and ends up finding his way to the island for lost creatures where he begins to get a bit of an education alongside other lost creatures and it is fun, there is a lot of magic, there's a lot of action, lots of moving parts, it is full colour which may appeal to those readers who are more capable. The same goes for Lightfall Book 1, The Girl and the Galdurian by Tim Probert. This one I thoroughly loved, it's just absolutely gorgeous. This is about B who lives with her grandfather and when he goes missing she ends up teaming up with Cad who is a Galdurian, a race that seems to be extinct and the two go on an adventure to find her grandfather and the lost race of the Galdurians. Again beautifully atmospheric, full colour, 
just stunning this story so these I'm really excited to take in just as something different two others that I'm going to take into the classroom these are both by Kay O'Neill so the first one is Dewdrop and this <laughs> is just such a delightful little book. This is very much for children who are first getting into graphic novels, big panels, not as much text. A lot of the story takes place through the expression of the characters and the illustrations. Dewdrop is an axolotl and it is time for the annual pond fair and Axolotl wants to cheer on all of their friends and it really becomes a story about how important it is just to do your best, which, you know, is a very common theme in schools. So. Can't wait to take this one in. And then there is Aquacorn Cove, also by Kay O'Neill. And again, just totally gorgeous. If you know the Tea Dragon Society, this is the same author. And their work is just absolutely stunning. So Lana and her father come back to their coastal hometown after a big storm and they're helping her aunt to help clear up the debris. And Lana ends up rescuing an aquacorn. As her family is nursing it back to health, Lana begins to realize that things that have happened in the town in the past are coming back into play and there's another storm on the horizon and that Lana needs to work with the aquacorns and also with her family to try and sort out what's going on. So it's really fun. Again, very beautifully illustrated, small amounts of text that is very simple to read and just very, very lovely. So those are the graphic novels that I am taking into my classroom. I'll leave a list of all of them down below. So if you want to check out more information, you absolutely can. In the comments, I would love to know what are your favorite early graphic novels. If you want to let me know that you're here, but you don't want to leave a comment, feel free to leave a jellyfish emoji down below. Otherwise, I hope that wherever you're on the world, you're staying safe and healthy and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.